Am I the asshole for calling my sister an idiot, worse than a kid and that she deserves being divorced? English isn't my first language and I'm tired, so I apologize for any mistakes. I, 20M, moved in with my parents for the summer for my job so save money, since the hotel I work is a 40 minutes train ride from my hometown. My sister, 29F, has been living with them for the last 4-5 months, because her husband is divorcing her and she isn't allowed to be near their children, 2X5M, for now. My sister fell for an American scam called, Young Living, that sells essential oils and in 8 months she spent around 12,500 euro, all their saving, on buying inventory that she was supposed to sell. She hid it in their apartment's basement where they never usually go. Brother-in-law had to repair one of the kids' bikes so he went there to get his tolls and found the boxes. Brother-in-law confronted my sister and to her credit she admitted to everything, including to secretly mixing the oils in their food. Brother-in-law threw her out and filed for divorce. There was an emergency hearing, because he wasn't allowing her to be alone with the kids, in which the judge decided that my sister is a danger to the kids. Bill showed record of the insane claims the company makes about their products, and she will only be allowed visitation when she sees a psychiatrist. She has refused to go and is fighting the order. Brother-in-law still allows us to see the kid and I even babysat them a couple of times when I didn't have exams and was still in the capital. My sister and brother-in-law both work as engineers and are well paid. The kids are in kindergarten, my sister mostly morks from home. Since I moved here last month my sister had been a nightmare, the only thing she does is scream, cry or complain, but she doesn't listen to advice, she has changed three lawyer. I finished my night shift at the hotel bar, club and was home by 7am my parent had already gone to work and my sister was in the living room drinking coffee. As soon as she saw me she started complaining how unfair her life is. I just wanted to eat breakfast and go to bed and she wouldn't even let me go to the kitchen. After the fourth minute I couldn't take it and shouted the title at her. The worse than a kid comment is because after googling the anime of the company I found problem with it in minutes, and that she is luck brother-in-law didn't make Facebook posts or contact her job, she works with classified information, to get her fired. She started crying and locked herself in her room. She is still crying and she throwing her stuffed animals, the only thing that is left in her room, at the wall to my room. Also she is late for work since her laptop and phone, it hasn't stopped ringing for 30 minutes, or on the living room table. So am I the asshole? Edit. Thanks for the all the advice. My parents came home finally and are currently fighting with my sister after I told them what has been going on. Dad gave me the car keys so I can sleep in it since I won't be able to sleep in the house for some time and I have a morning shift tomorrow. Edit 2. Thanks for all the comments. To answer some. 1. The kids are fine. Their only symptom was diarrhea and minor stomachache. Brother-in-law had them take a lot of tests. There was no damage to their livers and the only concern was with their stomachs, they had some sort of wart-like things in it. I don't know what it was exactly and I'm not planning to ask brother-in-law for details. But it cleared up with time and medication, without the need to operate them. 2. My sister was never like this before, although she is really competitive. She was first in high school and has won math and physics competitions. She was accepted in the best technical university of our country. When she was third during her university graduation she threw some tantrums, but we thought that it was because she was getting married and worrying for what master's degree to apply for. 3. My sister isn't religious and I don't know why she joined the MLM. The only thing that she has told us is that she thought that she could make a lot of money fast, and that she had people that would have bought all her inventory in a couple of months. 4. She has an amazing salary 3,000 euro a month, for our country that means 6,000 in our currency. 2020-21 was great for her, she was promoted because many people were let go for allowing hacker attacks and she has to work only 6 hours a day from home. 5. She used 17 kinds of oils in her and BIL's cooking, because she thought that they were harmless, but more than half of them weren't safe for human consumption according to Young Living's labels. Her defense was that the labels were just for show and they were actually safe. She would have gotten visitation. But when the psychiatrist was recommended my sister got mad and apparently said something like, this is what happens when a country allows illiterate people to become lawyers, technically true, and you see the outcome. 6. I shouldn't have stayed home after she started throwing stuff at her wall. I could have gone to our neighbor and slept there. She is a nice lady and has been like family for year, but honestly I wasn't thinking straight. 7. I slept in the car because there was a lot of screaming and I had to rest. 
also I could never spend half my paycheck, to sleep for a night, in the hotel I work at. 8. We have tried talking to her calmly, but it does not work. After my nap in the car I talked with dad, he was waiting for me. I will apologize to my sister tomorrow after I finish with work, because I shouldn't have shouted at her. During the weekend we will repair the lock to my door, it's been broken for years, but I never had a reason to use it. From tomorrow my sister will be working from dad's office, he is a notary, so he can keep an eye on her. She wasn't too happy but dad got mad and told her that she isn't too old to receive her first spanking at 29. I barely stopped myself from laughing. As for her work, mom is calling her GP to write a note she sprained her ankle and that she was in the hospital, so all my sister has to do apologize to her boss for not contacting him. She was also warned that if she behaves like this again, she will be living with our aunt. Mom apparently told my sister that she was disappointed with her and that she failed as a mother if her kid acts like this when she's 29. Sister was crushed, because she respects mom a lot, she stopped going to school at 14 to start working in a factory to support the family and now she is a department head in a clothing factory. But she still refuses to see a psychiatrist. Not the asshole. Just curious, what country do you live in? Sounds great for a judge to understand how ridiculous and predatory MLMs can be. In ta, she's literally throwing stuffed animals at your wall. Where is she not behaving like a child? Not the asshole. Your sister is having a nervous breakdown and she's still in denial over the severity of her actions. Especially concerning mixing those oils in the family's food unbeknownst to them, that's just crazy. Blows my mind when educated professionals fall into these MLM scams. You should know better. No, you're not the asshole, she really is acting like a child. She should get over herself. Am I the asshole for telling my teen daughter that she needs to choose between her baby or her dog? This is going to be a lot of drama so bear with me. I, 45 female, am the mother of a, 17 female, teen mom, Sabrina. Let me start by saying that while I may not love the circumstance, I do love my grandchild, whom we will call Liam. I've always been strict about boyfriends and such with both of my kids as I have a DS who became a mom at 15, and I was always terrified of that happening with my own. My approach worked well with my oldest, Mia, 25 female, who didn't start dating until her early 20s and ended up marrying her first BF. Unfortunately, Sabrina has always been a bit of a rebel. A few months ago, I received the news that Sabrina was pregnant. Naturally, I was angry, and I strongly suggested that she give it up. However, she refused and insisted on dropping out and getting a job to care for it. I made it clear that if she chose to have the baby, I would not provide any form of support. I wouldn't help with the baby's expenses, be there for her etc. She arranged for Mia to help with childcare and I stuck to my word. The father chose not to be involved, so it was not great. Fast forward, Sabrina gave birth, and things were okay for a while. A few years ago, we adopted a chihuahua named Nunu who had many health issues that Sabrina took upon herself to care. This meant there were vet bills that I usually help pay. Recently, its health has been declining. It started having trouble breathing, and Sabrina took it to the vet. She called me from the vet's office and informed me that Nunu had a trachea collapse, and it needed surgery, which came with a hefty vet bill. She explained that she couldn't afford it since almost all of her expenses were going towards Liam. She begged me to pay, saying she couldn't bear losing Nunu. I firmly declined. I had already expressed doubts, and I was proven right. I was not going to back down on my word. Sabrina became distraught, accusing me of not caring if Nunu died. I reminded her that she knew what she was getting into by keeping it and that she now had to choose between keeping her baby alive or Nunu. She called me awful before hanging up. When I arrived home later, she was gone. Mia texted me, explaining that Sabrina had shown up at her apartment in tears and asked to stay with her. Mia suggested that Sabrina and I needed some time apart. She mentioned that she was considering paying for it to be euthanized since Sabrina had asked her to cover costs, but Courtney couldn't afford it either. I said no. As long as Sabrina is still a minor, she will live under my roof, and I gave her 48 hours to return before I called the police. Mia asked me to reconsider, and that Sabrina was hurt by my comment. I stood my ground, stating that when someone makes adult decisions, I will treat them accordingly. Eventually, Mia and I reached an agreement that Sabrina will come home after she finished work tomorrow. Sabrina remains furious, and it feels like both of my kids are against me. 
Perhaps I need another perspective. Am I the asshole? And hash x200b. Update. If this is of any value to anyone, I just got the call from Mia that Nunu was peacefully put down, so no it didn't suffer. After I've calmed down some I do think it's best Sabrina and I have some space so I told Mia that Sabrina could stay at her apartment for the week under the condition they come up with some sort of plan to ensure that Liam isn't ever in a position where his mother isn't able to pay for his needs again. Mia thanked me and told me she would tell Sabrina. You are the asshole. 1. Instead of educating your child about safe sex and helping her get on birth control, you just decided she wasn't going to have sex, something a lot of teens do. If you were that worried about teen pregnancy you would have gone with the effective option. 2. When she got pregnant you pushed her to give her child up, something that is a deeply painful and personal decision. 3. You stopped supporting your minor child financially, CPS should be called on you. 4. You adopted a dog as a family and now you refuse to provide care for it. 5. Your daughter is clearly going through a hard time and you're being incredibly cold. Your daughters sound like very loving, caring people. I'm glad they have each other. You seem cold AF. You are the asshole. Poor doggo. I said no. As long as Sabrina is still a minor, she will live under my roof, and I gave her 48 hours to return before I called the police. You are the asshole. You're not going to like the way that ends. CPS is going to get involved and you're going to end up paying, or they will remove the child. To be completely honest. This situation as it stands should be reported to CPS. Adequate care for the child is not being provided and that should be investigated. That line doesn't end well for you, Sabrina, or the child. Or the dog. But I mean, euthanasia probably the unavoidable solution there. You are the asshole. Yikes. I don't think empathy is your strength. You are the asshole. Am I the asshole for telling my friend her pee smells bad? Heads up. This is kinda gross. I, 36F, have a friend, 36F, who I've known for a couple of years. She says she's healthy because she eats healthy and her parents were alcoholics so she doesn't drink alcohol, which I do commend her for since Australia has a big drinking culture, but she's addicted to soda instead, and never water. As a result, you can always tell when she was the last one to use to the bathroom because it reeks of pee. The first few times we hung out was at my house and I legit thought our toilet wasn't flushing properly. The first time I went to her house and needed to use the bathroom not long after her, it clicked what the source of the smell was because it hit me like a Mack truck as soon as I went near the bathroom. Once I worked out it was her pee, I started suggesting we go out to do things instead of hanging out at each other's houses because I didn't want to say something and embarrass her. I also started pushing her to drink water because I really do enjoy hanging out at home with her playing video games and I was worried she'd get kidney stones again, but she always declined it. She called me earlier today and asked if I wanted to come over and hang out tonight, but I declined and suggested dinner at a local cafe instead. She started asking why I never wanted to hang out at our homes anymore and I danced around it a bit, but she kept pressing so I eventually told her, because you don't drink water. Only drinking soda makes your pee, pungent. The smell lingers in the bathroom for a while. She instantly got defensive saying she's healthy and I told her she wasn't going to stay healthy if she kept ignoring her GP and the doctors at the hospital who had told her she needed to start drinking more water or she'd get kidney stones again. Then she said she doesn't smell, which I agreed with since she doesn't, but her pee does. She wouldn't let up until I lost it and said, the bathroom smells like someone has been making rancid chicken cup noodles after you use it which is when she essentially told me to go fuck myself and hung up on me. Am I the asshole for telling her about how bad her pee smells? I know I shouldn't have lost my cool and said the cup noodles thing, I already know I'm the asshole for that. Edit for some clarification. I didn't use the bathroom right after her at my house so the smell wasn't just around for a short time, it lingered for a while after she used my bathroom as she was leaving my house. My husband got home an hour or so after she left and he's actually the one who brought it up, I hadn't noticed it because I hadn't been in the bathroom since she used it. I have air freshener in my bathroom, which I used, but after that smell went away the pee smell lingered. I also tried Febreze and the same thing happened. After the second time it happened, I thought it might have been an issue with my bathroom so I asked my landlord to send out a plumber to check everything and he confirmed there were no issues. A lot of people have also brought up that she may have had asparagus, but my husband loves asparagus and eats it a few times a week. I'm well acquainted with that smell and this was different, more like very strong ammonia. 
Everyone sucks here I think you could have brought it up better, but her reaction was also over the top and super defensive. As a side note, you just got me to go get a glass of water so thank you for that. You are the asshole here for making assumptions about her body and her health. You are the asshole. Do you make a fuss when someone poops at your house too? That's also an unpleasant smell. I just truly don't understand why you care if the bathroom temporarily smells after someone uses it. Pretty strange. Pee always smells bad, though? Slight you are the asshole? You are the asshole slightly, just because you could have brought this up better, and before it got to the point of avoiding her house and not inviting her over. Honestly sometimes it's less brutal to be less polite and tactful and to just gently jokingly make a comment in the first place. Leaving it until it's a whole conversation just makes it way more awkward. Also has she been feeling alright? Because my pee smelled weirdly strong for a few weeks and I couldn't figure out why until the kidney infection that wasn't causing any other symptoms suddenly got to the point I was burning up. Am I the asshole if I want to move away from my family to live on my own? I, 20 male, have decided to move away from my family and live on my own. My mother and father hate my decision and have told me that if I go through with it, it would put a strain on the family. For a little bit of context, I am the oldest of three siblings by five years and my whole teenage years I was forced to watch and take care of my younger brother and sister, so my parents could go out and have fun. I wasn't allowed to go to parties I wasn't allowed to go out of town with friends I had to quit all my sports, football and track, because they wanted me to watch my siblings every day. My birthdays were never really about me and always about the kids. I had to let them open my presents. I had to share money that I had gotten from relatives and I had to let them blow out my candles. My parents always told me it was my job as the oldest, and that what I was doing was for the good of my siblings are. When I turned 15 my parents forced me into homeschooling so I could be home 24-7. Around that time is also when they made me drop out of all sports. Over the next three years, my parents used me as a free babysitter, and kept using the excuse that I was a great older sibling. All the meanwhile they went out every night and I am stuck at home watching them. Don't get me wrong. I love my siblings with all my heart, and nothing will change that but losing all social life and being forced to stay home all the time was a living hell. When I turned 18 I told them that now that I am an adult, I will begin looking for work and they weren't gonna stop me. We got into a huge fight which ended me going to stay with my uncle for a few days. When I explained everything to him, he went to my parents' house and offered to watch my siblings while I worked so for the next two years I worked two jobs while doing homeschool at the same time. I was offered a scholarship to a mid-level college at 18 years old and took the opportunity. So now I'm working two jobs and on the scholarship. On my 20th birthday I let my parents know that I had found an apartment with my uncle's help and I would be moving out in two weeks. When I told them this they blew up with anger. They asked me why would I move out when my family is all here. I told them I had had enough and wanted to move out and live on my own with nobody else. That was a week ago and my mother won't talk to me and my father is angry. Trying to explain I'm tearing the family apart. Am I the asshole? Update thank you for your kind words and advice. Only four more days left until I move. My parents have completely turned my younger brother against me. He was always their favorite. My younger sister understands and told me that whatever I do she'll still talk to me. It's my father keeps trying to ask me and my uncle where my new place is but neither of us will tell him and I am not going to tell him. I'm going to wait for when they both go to work and call off of work myself and have my uncle help me move. He's already agreed to help me. On a good note though, I've been promoted at my job. Along with a pay raise. Not the asshole there's a term for what your parents are doing, parentification. Moving out of your parents' home is a normal thing to do, especially at your age. Do they actually think you should live there until all of your siblings are old enough to take care of themselves? That's incredibly selfish of them. Do what you have to do and they should do what they have to do and pay for a babysitter. If you're 20 and 5 years older, there's a 15 yo, no? What kind of babysitting do your parents think your siblings need? Not the asshole. You did the right thing. Not the asshole in my opinion your parents seem to think that you're nothing more than a fee babysitter as you said and guilt trip you using your parents. Now that you're moving out they can't do everything they want to do. If you're completely self-dependent and don't need the help of your parents anymore then go for it bro. In ta. Make sure you have all of your identifying documents. Run your credit report to make sure your parents haven't opened anything in your name. Make sure they don't have access to your money. 
You may need to go low or no contact with them to avoid guilting you into coming back.